Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com, where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely. In this lesson, we're going to talk about finger picking and finger style. This applies to classical as well. We're talking about solo guitar playing, where we're playing multiple parts at once, melody, bass, sometimes chords also at least two things, sometimes three things. And we're gonna talk about something that's gonna help a lot with just our fitness of wanting to go towards this type of sound, which is thumb independence. Can we keep track of what we're playing physically, mentally, orally? When we're playing more than one thing at once, can we have our thumb uh, stay steady or independent from what we're playing on the top, whether it's melody or chords? So I wanna show you five different thumb independence guitar exercises that are gonna help with uh, this skill. I think they're really fun. They're very challenging. Something for you to keep in mind as you're working towards playing solo guitar or classical or fingerstyle or finger picking or whatever your goals are. Let's dive in. Thumb independence exercise number one. And with all of these, we're doing two versions of them. We're gonna do an improvisation version version and then let's apply it to a melody and actual song version. The improvisation version is important so we can get used to every type of rhythmic duration, play eighth notes, play quarter notes, play uh, dotted notes, you know, play half notes so we can then be ready for any type of melody that might come up. This first exercise is one I've talked about before. It's one of my favorite things to do and it's just keeping a steady bass going with quarter notes. I have a whole video just on this so check that out if you want to go deeper on this after you watch this portion of this lesson. There's a link in the description. Now I'm just gonna play this low E, and my goal is with those low E quarter notes, that's my top priority, that I just keep that going. And I try to make something phrasing on the top. And I'm playing any sort of E scale. You could do E major, E minor, whatever you want. And to get used to this, you can do eighth notes, then work on quarter notes, then work on half notes, then work on sixteenth notes, all separately, and then try to do phrasing with it, and then we'll work on playing melodies with it. So if I did A, you just keep that A going no matter what, and then work on some kind of some kind of scale, A minor pentatonic air, A blues. And that's just going. So it works this syncopation ability to have something going with the thumb steady and then different rhythms on top. And it's just so good for our brain to separate those things, to hear them differently, to obviously then work on just the physical coordination that it takes. So we want to try to play a melody with that now. And so what I recommend, this is great for song arranging too. You take whatever melody, whatever song, you take the tonic root of that song and do not worry about how the chords change. And then you play the melody um, just with that tonic root. And it's, this is actually such a good exercise for um, getting in touch with what a melody really does in a song and how simple and scalar so many melodies are. And it's the harmony that makes it feel like it's kind of moving all around and, and adding emotion to it. And that makes it seem so complex, but sometimes the melodies themselves are just simple portions of scales. So if I take In My Life by the Beatles, <laughs> That syncopation is where like da da boom and then still on that quarter note exactly there that bass note has to come in so that's just no matter how the chords change just keeping that a going is so great if even right even though it doesn't sound right because we know we want the chord to change there but just amazing coordination if i take another song what a wonderful world Of smiling there because it does sound so weird it's that we're not trying to play the song there we're trying to work on our coordination and it does indeed help us feel like oh where is this if 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 we work on playing the e major scale in this case and then we play around with that we see wow we just get to line up how clearly we can see our scale with the melody over this one drone we're going to play the, it with the chords in one of these other steps but that is thumb independence exercise number one to just have a single note drone improvise on whatever scale over that single note drone and then try to apply that to melodies take whatever melody just play the drone as the main key 
and play the melody over the top of it. And that exercise alone is powerful. You don't have to do all of these, just want you to find one out of this batch that works for you and keep the rest in mind as you continue to work towards your fingerstyle solo guitar playing. Let's do thumb independence exercise number two. Exercise number two is so much harder, but these are not in order of difficulty, these are in order of concept. This is just like the first exercise, but we're alternating the bass. So if we're on an A chord, we're gonna go A, E, A, E, and we're doing one, five, E is the five of A, so we're going one, five, and then try to play on top and just play long notes at first so you can keep this thumb going in half notes, just a scale, and then you can start to try to work on um, phrasing or something like that. And don't worry about that top part, what you're playing on the top, even sounding good or liking it, you're it's kind of just like survival of trying to keep that thumb going is the game and it's really hard. So little bits at a time, when you, when you fail at it, stop, recognize that, try it again and you'll get that thumb independence going. Try to listen for that thumb happening. You could do it in other keys, here's G, you could do it faster, so. This is like the thing I played in the, in the beginning intro of the lesson. This is one five one five G D G D G D. Okay, so any key, any chord, open, not whatever. You're just alternating and just kind of droning on that and trying to play melodies on top. Let's try it with a song. If I try it with "In My Life" again, and I'm going to do A E that alternating because it's in the key of A. So Pretty weird still that we're staying on one harmony for the melody. If you wanna just do that one as an improvisation, you don't have to apply it to a song. I'm just showing examples of how, if we know how to improvise with different rhythmic durations, we should be able to play a melody with the same concept in, in whatever scale and in whatever key. Let's go on to thumb independence exercise number three. Exercise number three is now we're gonna play just a single note root for a chord, but we're gonna switch chords. So let's say our chord progression is A, and then the next chord is E. Let's do A minor. So if you were just on the single note version, the exercise one, you could be jamming like this. Let's say the chord progression goes to E major or E7. You don't have to do a chord progression like that. You can kind of work with whatever you want. You could say, I'm gonna play C. Yes, you have to hold down a root note in that case, but you know, what are some notes above that work and keep that going. And then I'm gonna to switch to G. You know, something like that. So if I'm in this A minor, I'm just keeping that bass going. There's that chord change. four counts on each chord. And so that's just the concept. Just root, 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 root four times or two measures of it and then switch chords. So you can try to find open strings are just so nice to do that with, but you can find a few places that work really well with that. And it is, if you like this type of practice, don't shy away from you know using some fretted notes as well and finding just a limited number of scale options that might work above it. So if you're holding down G, you can say, what's the G scale? above that and then switch to a, a C chord or just stay on that G or whatever. So the song version of this, let's do the What a Wonderful World. This is really advanced, but it is the song version of it where every chord change now, we're gonna play just a quarter note on the root of every chord. This is amazing for working towards song arrangements. So that takes work. You have to know the chords, you have to find the roots, you have to work out the fingering. Um, but once you kind of do that mapping work and make sure it all works out, then it's just about that coordination of keeping that going. And you're like one or two steps away from like a solo guitar arrangement where if you want to get rid of that quarter note driving thing and then fill in a couple chord shapes so you have a fuller sound every once in a while, you know, at the end there, um, or... 
right? Just spots where you can fill in more notes, you're getting really close to having kind of a finished arrangement or a version of something that sounds fuller. But that's not what this is about. This is about the thumb independence. Let's do the thumb independence exercise number four. So since we're just kind of being systematic about it here, number four is gonna be the same idea of alternating bass, but changing chords now. So um, this is quite a difficult thing to work out. It's kind of more like, where can I do this? What chords should I do this with? You know, where where could this even work? It's it's not like the piano where you could just do that anywhere. So if you want to work on this, it's an it's amazing thumb independence exercise work, but you just kind of have to map out a spot where it works. You could do the A, E, you know, for an A chord, and then you could do an E chord where you alternate, you know, between something else. If I have to kind of find what works, I'm gonna do G, D, G, D, so that's one and five of G. And then I'm gonna think of a D chord. And this is a D chord first inversion, so this is F sharp, D, F sharp, D. So that's a nice one to play with if you want to. And then you can just play with a G major scale on top. So switching chords while we're doing this. So a lot of coordination, that's what it's all about, just that coordination um, practice. Again, don't worry about, is this the music I wanna make yet? It's a fitness thing. You know, if you're doing like a workout drill, we're not thinking, you know, why does this not feel like I'm in, you know, in the finals of the basketball game? Like you're getting more fit so you can do that. So you can then apply this to the arrangements you wanna play or your own composing or whatever. Let's apply this to a song. I'm gonna use What a Wonderful World again, and I'm gonna play one, five of every chord. You don't have to only use one and five, you can use the third of a chord, you can alternate between other things, but um, this obviously takes that homework of mapping it out for yourself. But if it's a song you love, it's so worth it. Then you get to work on this coordination practice, and this is gonna fill up the sound a lot more than when it was just the, the root of the chord, and obviously a lot more than when it was just the root of the only the key, so. Tricky thing at the end there, but beautiful kind of way to make it more multidimensional and you're still just working on can that thumb do what it's supposed to do rock solid every time while I'm playing these different rhythms and melodies on top. I just wanna say here, you don't have to do all these. This is not a thing where like, hey, here's a bunch of exercises that everyone should go through. Um, this, I just wanna plant these seeds for you. And if one of them works for you, great. If a couple of them are things you wanna to go towards, great. And, and I want these kind of thorough fitness musical exercise lessons to be something that like, you know, five years from now you might think, oh yeah, I wanna try to do the arrangement where I'm alternating the bass through the chords. Um, you don't have to do this tomorrow. And it's supposed to be hard. It has to be really difficult to make the most progress out of it. Just like, you know, your muscles are sore after after somebody is lifting weights. It's like the same thing with your with your brain. It's very, very exhausting to, to do this kind of coordination practice and mapping it out and everything. Um, so I just want you to go towards the aspects and, and the exercises in this lesson that you truly find um, appealing to you. And, and they seem like, yeah, that's the one. That's the one I wanna do. And just that first one alone is fantastic. Okay, let's do thumb independence guitar exercise number five. This one's very special. This one's very different. Um, I teach this one inside my finger style guitar course. And it's something I call the trading voices exercise. So we're gonna do this with a finger picking pattern. And then we're gonna do this with a piece of music. And the idea is when there's multiple voices going on, a bass part and a melody part, we want to get our brains and our ears and our hands really thinking of them as different parts. And the default is, you may have experienced this if you've done any solo guitar playing, that we just hear it and feel it as this one blob of sound, right? We just hear it as like, this is the guitar part. We're not separating um, both in the way we're playing it and hearing it and everything. We're not really actually separating and listening to the different parts um, differently. So this is, an, this is an exercise to kind of decode that and, and fix that problem for us. So if we take a, a finger picking pattern that's very common, and I have a video of the top four finger picking patterns, um, check that out if you wanna learn those. This is one of them, this is the, the pinch pattern. I'm gonna separate the bottom part and this top part. It's not that melodic or anything, it's just a pattern, but this bottom part is this. Okay, now I'll play the full thing again. 
And I'm going to try to play just the top part. Now the bottom again. Now the full thing again. Now just the bottom. And the goal is, this is actually a listening exercise. Every time you play the independent part by itself, when you play the full thing again, you listen for that part you just played. So if I go, when I come back in with the full thing, listen to this part. It should pop out. Now, when I come back in again, if I can not mess up while talking, but if I come, when I come back in after I play the top part, listen for just the top part, so. Now, now listen for that. It starts to make it multi-dimensional in the way that it should be. We can kind of create our habit of how we listen to them, separate things however we want. You could probably hear me tapping a little bit. That helps with just making sure I'm on with, you know, with the melody side of things. So finger picking pattern is a great one to do that with. Let's do it with an actual piece of music. This doesn't work with every piece of music, but it should be able to work with a lot of stuff, especially if there's like a bass and melody part. So let's say you're working on this piece. It's a famous uh, classical piece, Bach Barre. I'm not worried about you know executing it perfectly right now. We're just gonna talk about the separating of the parts. So this is so powerful, especially if you're playing any classical stuff at all. Can we play just the top part and then the full thing? And then just the bottom part. That's the part, usually the top part we're kind of latched onto, but are we really paying attention to the bottom part being separate its own thing? Do, 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 do. Ah, if you did what we're supposed to do with that exercise right then, we listen to this by itself. Do, 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 do. Then we listen for it popping out and being able to isolate it when we play the full thing. Okay, so very powerful for actually separating. Um, and it's a mental thing. It's an, it's an aural hearing thing. And by doing that, then we can treat them differently. We can make sure that is, is that bass part actually connected? It, a lot of solo guitar playing, the bass lines cut off in places that they shouldn't. Whereas like, it, you know, if it was a singer in a choir, they wouldn't stop at a weird spot and then come back in they would connect it fluidly because they're actually a single person singing a single part. So we want to, as much as possible, treat our individual parts as exactly that, as their own melody, as their own um, thing that we're expressing and um, having it be its own voice, right? Its own, what's the timbre? What's the volume? What's the dynamics? What's the, you know, all of these things with the individual voices. And this starts with finding some way to separate them the way we hear it the way we feel it, our coordination, all of that. So the trading voices exercise, when it works, when it applies to, you know, for certain pieces of music, when it works, or just the finger picking patterns or whatever, it is um, a very powerful um, exercise. Like I've been saying, all of this applies to solo guitar music, which does not mean taking a solo on the guitar. It means a complete piece of music with the guitar. You're playing the bass, you're playing the melody, you're playing the harmony. It's a full you know, piece of music. I have a solo guitar arrangement pack with a handful of free arrangements that are solo guitar arrangements that are really great to practice if you wanna grab that. There's a link in the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to get that. There's some pretty hard arrangements but a couple much easier ones and a nice variety and I'm always adding to it too. So download that if you like. There's tabs and regular notation as well. What I recommend watching next is my solo guitar arrangement video of Autumn Leaves, which is in that arrangement pack. You can click on the link on YouTube here on the screen. If you're watching on YouTube, there'll be a link straight to it, or there's a link in the description to uh, check out that video. I post a new lesson video every single week. Next week, I'm going to talk about tuning by ear with an unconventional, not the normal way of doing it, but a way that I think works better. Hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.